Good evening from Raleigh, North Carolina. I haven't recorded videos for YouTube in a while. It's kind of good to be back. Um, I'm not sure if anyone ever listens to these, you know. Um, you know, I get sometimes some people have a few views, and you know, some people, you know, I get a few views sometimes, and sometimes, you know, maybe not. I just enjoy doing them. At any rate, what I want to talk about um, right now, as you can tell, I'm competing with the freeway um, here at Midtown. Um, I want to talk about um, a procedural crime drama um, called This Is Your FBI. Um, I think it's probably one of our, one of the more famous ones, I believe. Um, you know, obviously it wouldn't be as famous as Dragnet or The Shadow, maybe Lights Out or anything, but it's, it's pretty well known. Um, I think it had a roughly about, what, a seven, eight year run, um, Sponsored by Equitable Insurance. I love that one. Matter of fact, let me tell you a secret. I often will go to bed with it playing. You know, uh, this is your FBI. Um, obviously, what they're trying to do, um, in addition to entertain you, um, is to get you in the good graces, you know, or at least you get a FBI in your good graces to explain why it is needed, you know, um, the different types of varying crimes um, that the FBI finds itself in um, to explain um, that the FBI um, um, is useful whether it be in the urban areas or rural areas, whether it be straight out in the desert. I think it's a very good program, or I thought it was a very good program. And like I said, it had an eight year run, 400, what was that thing about? Well, it was over 400 episodes. It was over 400 episodes. And so you could imagine, um, you know, being pretty popular. Especially during a time when, you know, many people don't have TVs in their home. Um, so, one of the things that drew me to it, um, was not just a scenario of them talking about crimes, not just them getting the bad guys, um, and the varying crimes, but also the humor. It was always interesting to me because it always seemed to have, seemed to be very humorous. Um, I remember they'd have somebody, well, there was one lady, and uh, she didn't want to hide out in the country. And the guy's like, look, baby, we got we to gotta have you hide out into the country, right? You know, hide out in the country because we don't think the police or the FBI will find you there. Um, the next next thing you know, the FBI comes by, uh, tells them that they found key things that is going to lead to their arrest um, and conviction. And the guy's like, well, honey, looks like you got your wish. You're not going to, you're not going to hide out in the country. <laughs> you know, you would get stuff like that. Um, you know, um, little funny zingers. I, I always loved it. Um, I think that was one of my favorite ones where there were, I think they had an anniversary show about Pearl Harbor and, uh, they had this expatriate and, and truth be told, I'm not sure if I really should have been laughing at this. I might just have a warped sense of humor, but, um, I remember the guy was explaining that, um, because there were American sympathizers to, um, Mussolini. And so, this um, Italian expatriate, who is now an American citizen, says, you know, I will not praise Mussolini. I will speak the truth out against Mussolini. 
and they came in they said you know what um we're tired of explaining to you why you shouldn't do this and so now we're basically going to deal with you and the guy was like well you know what i'm still going to speak as you know as long as i have you know breath in my gills that's not what he says but i'm paraphrasing and the next thing you know in the middle of it you know they nailed that guy you know it's like and then he just felt so oof i don't know why that's funny to me but anyway um you know you know, just nailed that guy you know um it's one of my favorite episodes because people are, you know, then there's one guy who's like, well, what are they going to do? I'm going to speak it about Mussolini as much as I want to. And next thing you know, some FBI guy comes out of nowhere. You know, um, you know, you know, we need to speak with you right now. You know, do you have this? Do you have that? Well, are you, are you a man? Well, uh, you know, niggas, uh, we need to speak with you. And, I, and it's just how the abruptness that just cracked me up. Um... I also thought it was interesting. Some of, some of them that they have are very interesting. There was one that I thought was a interesting take um, on the views of Nietzsche um, and the idea of the Superman and the Uber or the Ubermensch, you know, which would be in Germany. And just in case if you're wondering, well, what would the Superwoman be? Um, that would be um, the Uberfrau. So. Um, but they didn't bring that up. But anyway, this guy is robbing banks, robbing places based on the philosophy of Nietzsche. You know, that these laws really don't mean much um, if you're able to take power and find yourself above the law. Don't enslave yourself to conformity. You know, do not attach yourself to weaknesses. I mean, guy even shoots a dog, you know, to, you know, to show his girlfriend, um, you know, that, that you shouldn't, you know, find attachment, um, if you will, to things such as, you know, pets or animals, you know, you know, because it's, you know, a pathway to weakness. And so he winds up shooting it. Um. I thought it was interesting how they were able to kind of combine, if you will, the procedural the procedural drama with this level of, like I said, almost just some levels of just quick jolting humor that always, um, you know, that I was often fond of. Um, there were certainly some big names in there. That's William Conrad, um, who, to be honest with you, seemed to translate better in the radio that he did on television, even though he had wonderful dramas, didn't he? He had, um, what's it, Jake and the Fat Man, um, Cannon. Cannon was always one of my favorite, um, 70s shows. But he seemed to translate better in the radio, and I guess maybe it's because of his appearance. Um, one of my favorite voices, even though it's like kind of more, you know, up there. You know, a high pitch for a guy. Um, Frank Lovejoy, you know, had narrated quite a few of them. Um, anyway, I don't want to give you, you know, it's not that I'm trying to sum it all up, but I'm just trying to tell you the things that I like about it. But I loved, if you will, um, This Is Your FBI. It was one of my favorite sh um, shows. And like I said, I still go to sleep listening to that, either that or The Saint. Uh, with Vincent Price. Anyway, um, take care. I am going to wrap this up. And um, good night. It's a good night here, you know. If it hits you in the morning, then consider it to be a good morning. But at any rate, I'm so happy that I was able to share with you all. Hopefully the noise isn't too much. Okay, take care and goodbye.